The content of this podcast is based on medical fact and evidence-based practice from credible authoritative sources, but is not a substitute for your institution's policies, procedures, common sense, or good judgment. The views and opinions are those of Eric Bauer and Flight Bridge Ed in their entirety. This is the Flight Bridge Ed Podcast, critical care and emergency medicine education for nurses and paramedics. Here's your host, Eric Bauer. Hey everybody, Eric back with you. Coming to you from actually Honolulu, Hawaii. You know, we're having a rainy day. I'm out here on vacation and thought I'd record a few podcasts. One of the podcasts that I've been wanting to do, and, and uh, I actually recorded this a few days ago and thought I'd redo it, is the topic currently right now in the debate on utilizing adult BVMs versus pediatric BVMs when using back valve mask ventilation for our patients. And I have a lot of mixed feelings on this. Obviously, I'm going to go with whatever the data shows. And there's been some experiments done. There's been some discussion done. And I think when I started really looking at this, uh, we did a, a short little segment on the Second Shift podcast that's going to be released on Monday. But when I started Googling this, this has actually been a topic or a hot topic all the way back into the mid-2000s. So 2008, I actually found some topics related to this. So I guess the question is, and, and the really hot topic is, do we utilize an adult BVM for adult patients anymore? What if we got rid of that adult BVM for those primary patients, still carried an adult BVM on, uh, for you know, just that application on some patients that may need a bigger volume, and what if we used a pediatric BVM for all adult patients or the majority of adult patients? And so here's kind of the thought process. Why are we even considering this? You've heard me say on other podcasts that we have the potential, if we use two hands to squeeze that BVM, and my good buddy Tyler actually showed in a, in a video on, on Twitter that by even squeezing a BVM with one hand, that you can deliver with an adult BVM 1,200 mils or greater. 1,200 mils. The next podcast I'm actually going to be recording is a, is a podcast, and it's labeled, Should a Tidal Volume of 6 mils per kilo be used in all patients? And we're going to look at the evidence-based practice, the clinical kind of application uh, and and look at this more of a retrospectively um, and, and identify do we need higher tidal volumes or do we need lower tidal volumes and what is the correct answer. So I think this podcast is a, is a good podcast to segue into that. We know that the ArtsNet study back in 2000 demonstrated a huge, huge reduction. We're talking close to 40% reduction in morbidity and mortality when we applied a tidal volume of six to eight mils per kilo in comparison to the old way where they utilized tidal volumes of 10 to 15 mils. And in the ArsNet study, they actually reduced that down to 10 to 12 mils per kilo. They looked at 861 patients and they actually stopped the study well short of that endpoint because they saw such a reduction in morbidity and mortality. So our adult BVMs, they deliver upwards of greater than 1,000 mils. Why do we need that? And so I have some ideas. I, I, I kind of I, I want to put out this podcast. I want the dialogue. I want you to post your comments on Twitter. I want you to post your comments on Facebook because I think this is a really hot topic. There's also evidence that a pediatric BVM will deliver consistently five to 600 mils per breath. Well, we know normal physiology for an adult, whether you're male or female, we all probably deliver, based on our own effort, four to 600 mils per breath. That's probably normal physiology, and that equals to about six mils per kilo. So why are we utilizing a BVM that has a capability of delivering 1,000 mils or greater? Was this an oversight? Was this something that they just missed? We know that every one of us have, we have the different ability to ventilate a patient. Our hands are bigger, and if we utilize two hands to squeeze an adult BVM, 
we definitely can deliver greater than a thousand mils. We also know that if you're maybe a female or you have very small hands, um, you know, you almost have to use two hands to squeeze that bag. So I think the, the big point is, is why did they develop a VVM that has that capability? Why haven't we utilized a pediatric VVM in the past? And you're going to hear on the Second Shift podcast, me have this dialogue with Evan and Mike and kind of our different views on this. This has become such a hot topic that there's agencies around the country that are removing BVMs, or I should say removing adult BVMs, as the primary source if you utilize a BVM. They're going to utilize a pediatric BVM and have that adult BVM as a backup. So here's kind of my thought on this. I know based on the critical care application, mechanical ventilation, I know that six mils per kilo, that doesn't always fit every single person. And I think that's where you come in with a range of six to eight mils per kilo. Every one of us have different lung characteristics. We have better compliance than maybe our neighbor. We may have poorer compliance based on our physiology, our disease process. And so I think to label, and I'm going to talk about this extensively in this next podcast that I talked about earlier, to label everybody should get six mils per kilo is wrong. And that's where we get that range of six to eight mils per kilo. So my fear is this, is obviously I'm an educator. I want to teach. And what I don't want to happen, and and obviously I'm a small small kind of uh, person in a big pond. And and really what I have to say probably doesn't matter when we're looking at this globally. But I don't want to fix a problem and put a bandaid on something that's probably more of a training issue. Why are we changing our practice? Some things that I've heard from my colleagues and from other people in, in the industry related to this is we bag too fast. We deliver too much volume. We're causing barotrauma. Well, you've heard me on other podcasts, and my good friend Dave Vera talks about this extensively when he teaches airway management, that there was a study done that, that these are experienced providers pre- performing airway management and bag valves mass ventilation, and they, on average, based on this study, they were delivering 50 breaths per minute. So if you couple that with squeezing the bag too hard, We know if you squeeze that bag too hard and you deliver a breath with a greater pressure of 20 centimeters of water, you're going to open that gastric sphincter and you're going to push a lot of that volume into the stomach. That's going to cause a detrimental effect. You're going to increase that volume in the stomach and you could potentially cause vomiting, which is going to cause a higher incidence of aspiration. So we don't want that. So I think if we go back to good mechanics, good BLS teaching of how do we use a BVM correctly? I mean, I think when you look at how we apply bag valve mass ventilation, and I compare it to what I was taught 24 years ago when I first took my first EMT class, I mean, I was not taught a lot of the things based on what we know now, and it's because research and practice and application has taught us all these things. So as long as we deliver a breath slowly, over three seconds, we watch that chest rise, right? Three second chest rise. We make sure that we're not squeezing that BVM with two hands. And the most important thing is we don't use epi, right? Adrenaline, not paying attention. If we don't, if we don't pay attention to what we're doing, we're going to bag our patients way, way too fast. And that's going to be a big, big deal. So I think it comes back to training. I also know from clinical application, not only in my own setting, in my own clinical practice, but reading thousands of mechanical ventilator charts that I have over the years, is there's a big, big issue a lot of times where patients will actually desaturate when they're moved from a BVM, once they're intubated, to a mechanical ventilator. This is one of the things that has really opened my eyes to that blanket statement of 
always start with that lung protective six mils per kilo. And I'm really starting to kind of move away from that mindset. And I think, again, in medicine, you have to be objective and be willing to change your thought process. And the reason why I say that is because I've seen over and over and over where we've taught our providers, we've taught our clinicians to automatically start with that lung protective six mils per kilo. So they're bagging their patient with an adult BVM. We just said that the evidence has shown that you're going to deliver with with two hands. If you have a bigger hand, you squeeze with one hand, you're going to deliver a breath greater than 1,000 mils, which we don't, we don't need. For most of us, that's double what our normal physiologic tidal volume is. So you have somebody that's being ventilated with a BVM after intubation. They get moved to the ventilator, and what do we do? Well, we do what we're taught. We're taught six mils per kilo. So they plug in that six mils per kilo based on their ideal body weight, and what happens? The patient desaturates. Well, why does the patient desaturate? Right, Because we always teach that tidal volume and rate equal minute ventilation, and that's an indication of ventilation. But we have to also understand that there are patients out there, based on their disease process, their physiology, that they have a poor compliance. Maybe the patient is bigger. Maybe they're a larger patient. Maybe based on their past disease process. An example would see a COPD patient. COPD patients have larger lungs because of the disease process and they need larger volumes. What if a patient has a lot of pulmonary edema or they have a lot of interstitial fluid in their alveoli based on an inflammatory response, whether that's that initial acute lung injury or ARDS. For whatever reason, these patients may need a higher tidal volume. And that's evident when you take a patient from a BVM, you put them on a mechanical ventilator at that starting six mils per kilo and then desaturate. And I've seen this over and over, and it's very confusing to our providers. They can't get that SpO2 up, so they immediately take the patient back off the ventilator and they put them on the BVM, and they start bagging the patient again, and all of a sudden that SpO2 comes up. Well, why does that happen? And I've talked about this in previous podcasts, and it happens because we have to translate what we just did. We took them back off, put them on a BVM. Well, again, we're giving larger volumes, and we're squeezing that bag over probably two to three seconds. So if you translate that back to how we maintain a patient on the ventilator, that means we may have to go up from our six mils per kilo. And we may have to lengthen the inspiratory time. So this is just a quick example of a blanket six mils per kilo may not always work. Some patients may need eight, nine mils per kilo. So that's my kind of fear. Do I think that the majority of patients out there are going to do well with a pediatric BVM? Probably. But I'm going to leave you with one last kind of thought. How much volume do we lose in dead space? How well do we actually use our mass seal? Is that why they developed an adult BVM? Is because we lose a lot in that mass seal? Do we lose volume in dead space? Or is that kind of not one of those issues that we have to worry about? Do we only have to worry about dead space with a mechanical ventilator? And I would say probably that's the case, is that dead space isn't probably a big big deal. But I guarantee if we're utilizing a BVM prior to intubation, we're teaching now to use that two thumbs up technique. We don't teach the EC technique anymore. But that two thumbs up technique, putting those index fingers down on the angle of the jaw, and putting your palms over the top of that mask with your thumbs upward and actually utilizing your hands as a vice, squeezing that mask down, that's the proper way. It all comes back again, though. We can't just have a a knee-jerk reaction and say, because we're doing all these things wrong with a BVM, we're going to switch from an adult BVM to a pediatric BVM because I think we can still have those same issues. We're still going to bag fast got to teach how to correctly use a BVM. We have to also think about what happens when we utilize lower tidal volumes and higher respiratory rates. Because I guarantee you 
that no matter what BVM we're going to use, we're auto always going to see patients being hyperventilated. It's always going to happen. One of the problems with that is you have increased amount of dead space. And that's an issue where we start looking at lung protective tidal volumes where you get down to four mils per kilo in those ARDS patients. You start having an increased amount of CO2 buildup and hypercapnia, and these patients will become more and more acidotic. And that's often agreeable. That's a good thing in, in the context of protecting that lung from further harm. But that's in those patients that have severe lung injury, ARDS. So what's going to be the result of doing this? And I don't have the answer. I just think it's important to bring up all these things and think about, are we fixing an issue? If we go to a primary pediatric DVM kind of mindset, are we actually going to be hypoventilating our patients? If you ventilate your patients at a higher rate, you also have a higher risk of auto peep because you're not going to allow your patients to exit. So I could go on and on and on. I think that there's a lot of things to consider. I would love your feedback on this on uh, Facebook or on Twitter. Or email me at eric.bauer at flyberjet.com. And maybe we can do a follow-up podcast. So again, thank you for joining me, and I will talk to you soon. This has been a production of the Flight Bridge Ed Podcast, leading the way in pre-hospital critical care and emergency medicine education.